a lot of times when we're using scientific notation, we're going to be using it in relation to a calculation that we need to do. So it's important to understand how to input scientific notation into your calculators. Now in our class, we're going to be using the TI-30X2Ss. And there's different ways that you can input scientific notation. I'll show you those in just a minute here. Um, but there is a special function button that will cut down on a couple keystrokes. No matter which method you use, you're going to start by putting in the base number. And remember, that's the number that should be between 1 and 10. Once you put in that base number, the, the method that cuts down on some keystrokes is to use the exponent function. Now, this is going to look like a, a double capital E um, label above the inverse key, which is above the 7 key, on your calculator. So if we take a look at the example here, you see that you've got that x to the minus 1 key right above the 7. And in order to enable that exponent function, the EE, you must press the second button first. Now, the thing to remember is that when you use this function, all right, and, and after you put in your power of 10, you don't type in times 10. That EE function, that exponent function, replaces that. And so you would simply put in the base number, do second, EE, and then whatever your power of 10 is. And we'll look at some examples of how to enter positive powers of 10 as well as how to handle a negative power of 10. When you want to work with scientific notation, there are different ways that you can input your values. I'll show you a couple of ways here. No matter which method you use, you always start by putting in the base number. So if we're talking about the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, start with a 3, right? and then you can manually put in the times 10, so times 10, then we need to use the caret button to raise that, that 10 to a power of 8, and when we evaluate that, we see that we get an answer of 300 million. Another way that we can input that number and save ourselves a couple keystrokes is with the secondary function, the exponent function. So we start with the base number 3, and then we're going to do second and the EE function, Notice we just get a capital E on the screen. Sometimes you'll see this on Excel when it's trying to represent numbers in scientific notation. That E takes the place of times 10 and then the caret symbol that we used before. So now all we need to do is put in the 8, evaluate, and we see that we still get the 300 million. So it saves a couple of keystrokes. If we take another number that we commonly use in chemistry, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. As I put this in, start with my base number, second, EE, 23. When I evaluate this one, notice the answer goes straight to scientific notation. We don't see it filling the screen, and that's because with 23 power to the 23rd, that means we're going to have 21 zeros after that too. That's way too big for this screen. So the calculator automatically defaults to your scientific notation. Notice the times 10 is really tiny, so you've got to be careful that you don't miss that and think 6.02 raised to the 23rd power, which is not the same thing. If we need to input scientific notation and we've got a negative exponent for the power of 10, you need to be careful how you input that. So this is Planck's constant. We use this when we're talking about um, light energy. So we would put in 6.626 second EE. Now, the negative sign needs to go before the 34, and you must use this negative key down here. Do not use the minus operation key. If you do that, the calculator won't understand what you're trying to say, and it'll just say syntax error. So we put in negative 34. Once again, this is going to be a very small number, lots of zeros, so it's not going to show in floating form, it's going to revert directly to scientific notation form and give us 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th power. When we do calculations with scientific notation, we want to be careful of the order in which we input the terms that we're using. Now, in just a straight up multiplication, uh, it's not too difficult. We would put in the base number, 9.28, to our second EE and then the power of 4, and then we multiply it by the second term, 6.1 exponent function, and we're going to do a negative 7 this time. And when we evaluate that, we get 0 0.056608, which if we round it to two digits because of our uh, second term there, and we'll talk about significant figures in a later lesson, 
um, but we would just round this off to 0 0.057, or if we put it into scientific notation mode, you would get that as 5.7 times 10 to the minus second power. Whenever we have a calculation that involves uh, multiple terms, particularly uh, in fraction form, we want to be careful how we input the values. So we'll start with 2.19 second EE third power times, then we have 4.73 second EE fourth power. Now we're going to evaluate the numerator. So that's what we get for our numerator. Now we're going to do divide by 8.81 second exponent function tenth power. So it's going to take that previous answer, divide it by our denominator, and we see that we would get 0 0.00118 with three digits based on all of the terms that we had. Or if we express that in scientific notation, we'd expect 1.18, again rounded for three terms, three significant digits, times 10 to the minus third power. Now here's where using parentheses really becomes super important. If we put these values in, 6.12 second EE third power times 7.28 second EE fourth power, and we evaluate that, that's our numerator term. Now when we do the division, we need to make sure that we put parentheses around this whole operation, this mathematical operation. Because if we don't, it's going to evaluate the division by the 8.314 first, and then instead of dividing by the 1.15 times 10 to the fifth, it's going to multiply by it. So we're going to do open parentheses, 8.314 times, now we're going to do the 1.15 times 10 to the fifth. So 1.15 second EE fifth, we're going to close the parentheses on that, so that's that scientific term. Now we're going to close the original parentheses, and now we're going to hit equals, and we, should, we want to use three terms, three digits, like we had all throughout. Uh, so this would be 466, or if we expressed it in scientific notation, we would expect 4.66 times 10 to the second power.